But it also should be noted that, uh, you know, in, in the Great Tennessee Valley, there at the airports at uh, Knoxville, Tri-Cities, and Chattanooga, you know, they had winds about 5 to 15 miles per hour throughout this event. So, you know, if you're in the, the Great Tennessee Valley, you're probably wondering, well, what's going on? Why is there a high wind warning out for the foothills? Because there's hardly any wind at all. And, you know, it's just a narrow zone along the foothills that, that experience these really strong winds. Wherever that mountain wave is, is intersecting the ground, you're going to get some really strong winds. So a lot of people during these events are probably thinking, you know, what's going on? What's all the fuss about this, you know, high wind warning that's in effect? Because there's not much wind. Well, if you happen to be in that narrow zone in the foothills that's getting the high winds, you know why there's a lot of warning out because you could be getting wind speeds of, you know, 80 to 100 miles an hour, and in some cases, maybe even excess of 100 miles an hour. And, of course, if you're flying over the mountains, too, you're going to be getting a lot of severe turbulence. Uh, if you look at a satellite image during one of these events, um, this particular event we had, a, you know, it was during the day, so we could look at the visible satellite imagery, and you can see there's some uh, breaks in the clouds there that are just kind of parallel to the, the mountain ridges. And that's where the, the mountain wave is, is descending on the leeward side of the mountains. So, you know, we have a, a strong southeast wind going across the region here. And so on the downwind side of the mountains, you're seeing breaks in the clouds, not only near the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but you can see further west, there's, there's breaks in the clouds over there to the west of uh, the Cumberland Plateau. And then up in Virginia, you can see there's some breaks up there, uh, being caused by the Cumberland Mountains up there in Wise County, Virginia. Uh, it should also be noted that, you know, these clouds were mid-level clouds. They were about, you know, they were either right at the altitude of the mountains or maybe a little lower. And so that's why the, the mountain waves were able to, to uh, punch through these clouds. You know, this, where you're seeing these breaks is where the, the mountain wave is descending uh, on the leeward side of the mountains there. So, you know, if there were a bunch of high clouds over the area, then the high clouds would have obscured our view. And because mountain waves won't affect the high clouds, you know, the high clouds won't see these breaks. So if there were a bunch of high clouds, we wouldn't have been able to have this nice view of, uh, of these cloud breaks. Uh, this is a typical weather map of uh, what, what happens during a, a mountain wave event. Usually we have a low pressure system coming up across the Ohio River Valley. In this case, the, the low is a little bit further north. It's up there in the Great Lakes region. But now winds, for those of you who don't have a meteorology background, winds, winds go counterclockwise around the low. So since we're still out ahead of the low, uh, we were having a southeast wind flow over the mountains. And we also had a stable air mass over the mountains. And, you know, you can see there was a, that red line down there in Georgia and Alabama. That's a warm front that's coming up toward us. But this is a typical a pattern to see low pressure systems that are just to our northwest and that usually puts us in the warm sector where we get a, a strong southeasterly wind flow coming across the mountains. Uh, I did a climatology here of, of mountain wave events and uh, observations began at Cove Mountain in 1996. So that's one of the reasons why uh, not a lot's been known about mountain waves in this area until recently. Uh, so fortunately, we do have some observations now, not only at Cove Mountain, but we have a, a wind tower now at uh, Camp Creek Elementary School that helps us measure the exact wind speeds in the Camp Creek area. And as you can see, we uh, sometimes we can get as many as nine events per year, and some, some years we'll only get about three events. Uh, on average, we get about six events per year where we see winds in excess of 58 miles per hour at Cove Mountain that are directly attributable to mountain waves. And if you look at it by month, most events occur between November and March, you know, during, during our cool season. And that's because uh, during the, you know, anywhere from late fall through early spring, we start seeing more low pressure systems coming across the area. And we also 
have more stable air masses over our area. During the summer, we usually have an unstable air mass. And remember, you know, I was telling you that air in a stable air mass, air wants to stay at its same altitude or sink. And in an unstable air mass, air wants to rise. So that's why we get thunderstorms in the, in the summertime. But that also keeps us from having these mountain wave events uh, in addition to the fact that we don't really have a lot of low pressure systems because those low pressure systems will produce the strong southeasterly winds across the mountains. So that's what kind of gets the mountain wave events going. And as you can see, December is our, our peak month. That's usually when we see a lot of, a lot of mountain wave events in this area. Uh, if you look at mountain wave events by hour, then you basically just see that we get a lot of mountain wave events at night and in the early morning hours. And that's because we usually have a, that's when we typically will have a stable layer present over the area. Uh, I also wanted to just put an image of the, the Coffrin Barn in uh, Gates Cove of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's a historic barn that's been there. Uh, I think for over a hundred years and uh, during the Christmas Day event, the mountain wave event from 2009, uh, we had some winds measured up to 94 miles an hour at Cove Mountain and unfortunately it, it destroyed that barn in Cates Cove and you may be wondering well you know if that barn's been around for more than a hundred years how come it just it took until now before it, it was destroyed by mountain waves because you know I'm sure mountain waves have been around for a long time uh, I think you know in, in my opinion I think what might have happened here is just I think every time we get mountain wave events the the wavelength of the mountain waves is a little bit different just depending on what the background winds what what the wind speeds are and, and also uh, the exact direction that the winds are coming from will vary from event to event and so I think that causes the wavelength of these mountain waves to be a little bit different for each event and I think it just so happened during this event the this barn just happened to be right in the the crosshairs of, of the strongest mountain wave winds whereas in the past even though you've had mountain wave winds affecting Cades Cove area you know the the location of the barn may not have been in the exact you know crosshairs of the of the strongest winds. But of course it, it would be nice to have observations you know all over the place, have a really dense network of observations, maybe one per square mile, because that would really be able to give us information about where exactly the strongest winds are and how they vary from event to event. But of course that involves a lot of money, so we'll just have to uh, hope that maybe someday in the future we can get something like that set up to to know more about about exactly what's happening you know around the mountains otherwise we just you know have to do a lot of speculating and uh... okay so here's a picture of a 18 wheeler that got overturned during uh, strong winds at, at Camp Creek during a recent event that was on December 20th 2012 and we had winds measured up to 90 miles an hour at Cove Mountain Unfortunately, we weren't getting any wind information from the, the Camp Creek site at that time. Uh, but I, I would suspect we probably had winds in excess of 80 miles an hour uh, to produce damage like this. You know, we see that a lot. Now that we've got that wind tower there at Camp Creek, we do see that a lot during these, these wind events, these mountain wave events. We can see winds in excess of 80 miles an hour uh, pretty frequently. Uh, you can see this this house really got damaged pretty good by uh, the same event, December 20th, 2012, and this was at Camp Creek. 